So uh, I'm Sri and I'm today I'm going to talk about R. Uh, so as most of you might already know, R is a language which is uh, more in tune for data analytics and statistics. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about the basic uh, part of R as well as taking a, a specific application of uh, stock markets where people can build rule-based uh, trading systems. And, uh, if, how R can be used so that you can uh, analyze a, you know, the data of the stock and you know, trigger based on the technical parameters like moving averages, etc. Uh, but I'm going to uh, try and touch upon different aspects of R. Uh, so what is R? So <clears throat> this is a textbook definition which you would find if you go to uh, the R website. So it gives you, so first of all it's very, uh, very much written or developed with data in mind, and we'll see how that is. Uh, so it has all the facilities that we need to scrub data. Uh, you have for analyze and doing calculations of uh, you know large data sets, as well as you know uh, facilities and libraries for visualizing the results of the analytics that you have. Uh, so it's object oriented in the sense that uh, everything in R is an object um, and these are the few and it's built around a few foundation objects like a vector, list, factors, matrix, data frames, arrays and time series. Uh, now if you look here, uh, so this is how you would define a vector. So you know, if you want to generate a large sequence or index, it's very straightforward. To, uh, you know, define a vector. A vector is basically a collection of same type of objects like integers or characters or anything. Uh, and then, uh, if you define, um, you know, it gives you different facilities so you can define, uh, you know, different sequences, random numbers, etc. as well, which you would do. Uh, but the nice thing about it is if you look at like even the operations that are there, for example, say the if statement. Uh, normally, a if statement will be working on, say, one uh, particular value or this. In this case, what you would find is we have defined two vectors. You have e odd, which is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and you have even. <coughs> and then the if statement, essentially what it does is um, So if statement, what it basically does is based on these Boolean values of this vector, it will pick either from one set or the other. So it's very, very easy if you want to compare and pick items from different sets or if you want to combine uh, different data uh, sets that you have. Um, you can also have lists which are collection of dissimilar objects. You can have um, you know, integers or you can have strings. And then it also allows you to uh, have named elements, so you can you know, uh, <coughs> address the individual elements in the list as well. Um, in addition, R also allows you, uh, <coughs> you know, once you have data, you want to subset the data, which is that you want to fit, you know, based on conditions, you want to select certain parts of the data which are there. So something like that is quite simple here, because here you can see that, um, for example, out of this array uh, or vector foo, you have selected only elements which are there, uh, which are less than five. Um, so it's quite powerful in terms of how it abstracts these kind of things compared to uh, other programming languages which are more functional, uh, like C or Python or anything else. Uh, this could give you a lot more um, you know, um, quicker ways of prototyping as well as selecting data which is out there. Uh, also, the arithmetic. So similarly, you can uh, select, include, and exclude data based on how you like it. Uh, you can do operations on large sets of data. So here, if I say a multiplier, even if I multiply by two, it's going to go ahead and multiply the whole of the vector with that. So that way, it is uh, <coughs> quite, quite easier to program. And then it gives you uh, ways where you can run different functions on each of the elements either individually or collectively. 
So here I can do uh, <coughs> you know, a sum of the entire vector, or I can do, uh, for example, here, what I have is I have a basically a list with two different elements. Uh, there is an <coughs> item A, which has 1 to 10, and an item B, which is 1 to 20, and I can apply something on individual elements. So here I do a sum, but I'm uh, you know, summing the individual elements. So that way it is quite powerful when it comes to handling and manipulating uh, the data and operating on the data. Um, you can define functions, uh, <coughs> you know, but what, where R really starts to come into play is that it can take all these very, very simple constructs and start dealing with large sets of data. So for example, what I have here is, <coughs> you know, uh, a dump from National Stock Exchange of you know about 1,500 stocks uh, and what their positions were yesterday. Uh, so in R, you can go ahead and uh, <coughs> import that um, PSV directly. So this is how it looks. Uh, so whatever was in CSV, you can directly read into it. You can also read from different databases, uh, <coughs> or you can um, you know. Uh, files, or you can uh, take plain text files, or HTML uh, files, or you can get JSON objects and import that data uh, into R as well. And then what you can do is, within this, you can select what you want. So this was what the original was. And then you have uh, selected part of the data which you are interested in. And, uh, <coughs> It's quite straightforward. It's similar to writing a select saying that I want to select these rows and I want to select only stocks which are the equity uh, symbols I want. And then even calculation on large sets is quite uh, easier because for example here what uh, it shows is that I'm just doing a calculation between what was the last clues and uh, the today's clues which gives me how, you know, how much did the stock change in a day. And then, um, you know, for this about 1,500 or so, I can look at the percentiles and see, uh, you know, how many stocks have moved uh, <coughs> in what range, and I can set up uh, bins as well. Um, and it shows me what is the percentage of change uh, for each of the stocks. If I plot it, most of the stocks, uh, at least on Friday, were, uh, you know, the were trending negative, and very few stocks were actually positive. And if you want to look slightly differently, there are different ways. And if you want to do a cumulative uh, uh, thing, what you could see is that uh, this is written that we go and analyze this data. The other thing which R handles really well is time series, which is that uh, you, know, you take a number of readings over a period of time and you want to analyze that data. Maybe it is logs, maybe it is uh, financial data. <laughs> or maybe it is any trend you want to do. Uh, so there are different kinds of time series that R can handle and it has different classes that would allow so something like regularly spaced time series uh, where you, know, you have periodic intervals uh, that are there. Uh, then you can have different classes for multiple uh, time series and uh, <coughs> you know, time series which are not regularly uh, spaced. Now, if you look at one of the time series application, it is how the stocks or different commodity prices uh, move and how you can find trends within them and how you can analyze it. Uh, so for that, R offers you uh, a different uh, <coughs> sets of libraries that you can use. Uh, so at the base, what we have is a time series object, which is the most uh, basic one, which will have the time series and the value. Uh, then you have one more, which is a financial modeling framework, which uh, you know, which can convert the time series, say, from daily to weekly or monthly or any of that. And then you have technical grading, which will give you moving averages, frequencies, etc. And then if you want to go and build, find out trends based on that, what you would need is some, a framework which will say, uh, allow you to find signals. So for example, what you want to do is you are looking at a large spectrum of stocks, like 1,500 or 2,000 stocks that are moving, and what you want to find out is that what has been the moving average of these stocks. And I want to set a rule so that when the stock crosses a moving average, 
it will come into my radar and I would like to make a trading decision. And <clears throat> the construct is basically a strategy model framework which will help uh, define these rules that basically will signal uh, you know, any change based on whatever parameters that have been defined. And then you have blotter, which is nothing like a register where you can you know, make different entries and plot that, okay, over a period of time, you know, what are the strategy you apply, how is that performed? And then you have performance analytics, which will you know, compare uh, for a large number of trading um, decisions or anything that you have taken, how uh, the portfolio has performed, how has it compared with other assets or anything else that you have. Uh, <coughs> What time series if we look at that? So I'm reading a time series from uh, uh, basically CSP file, and that's the stock price of the DFC. Now, this is how it would look normally, and this is the kind of graph that you would see if you go into uh, CNBC or anywhere else. Uh, it shows the different volumes and how the stock has trended over the year time. Now, I can easily go ahead and add different things to it. So you know, I don't like that it's too volatile on a daily basis. So I would like it on a weekly basis. And this is only for 2012. So earlier it was you know, uh, on a daily basis. Now I want to look at on a weekly basis how the stock has, or if I want to look at on a monthly basis. So you can quickly you know, either compress the data or expand it. And you know, it will allow you to you know, kind of step back and see. And that's very, very useful when you're looking at large sets of data. Also, if you want to see how the trend has been over a period of time, I want to see over a rolling period how the trend has been. So if I'm doing something like a cohort analysis or something where I have these events where some user is there, then he's logging out or anything, I want to see that, OK, what has been the average period of uh, you know, users' sessions, say, for this week versus past week or anything else. So I can apply a similar kind of analysis there, and I say, tell me what has been the yearly or the weekly or the monthly or the daily trend which has been there. So, <coughs> and then obviously you can, you know, take that and plot that very quickly. Uh, so, uh, so, I mean, so it, it just shows that how simple it is that, that few lines of code, you can take a large set of data which has been there for you know, uh, <coughs> with a huge number of measurement points, and you can quickly uh, summarize it, analyze it, uh, or display it as well. Now, the other thing is that, OK, you have seen the data, and all this is manually doing is fine. What you really want to do is that have an automated way where you can set some rules and triggers so that you know, based on a trend that you are going to see, you will look at uh, the data and <clears throat> basically trigger some actions. And in financial markets and any, uh, or others, what people do is that they will figure out uh, you know, some technical parameters, they will set these triggers, and they would like to put money over those triggers and do trading. Uh, <clears throat> and these are the trading calls that many a times uh, you know, we hear on the channels that, OK, currently the stock is 600, it might go to 620, or whatever it is. And then the other thing is that once you have a strategy or a hypothesis, you want to validate that hypothesis. You want to get confirmation that your hypothesis is correct, which means you have to go back and test your hypothesis. So R allows you to do that, where what it basically does is that you can define a strategy. So for example, <coughs> here, what you have is you have a moving average um, which is there. So for example, so for example, I have this um, chart here. Now, what I'm going to do is So I can see that, OK, the stock is trending based on 
you know, whatever its daily price, and then the red line is basically the moving average. And let's say I want to create a rule where I say that I don't want to own the stock if it goes below the moving average. You know, it's, it's the long-term trend in that case is down. I don't want to have any money. In it. Whereas if the stock moves about the trading uh, about the moving average, then I can see a trend. That I want to put money in. That's the hypothesis. Let's say I have. Now, how you know? So what I would do is I would go set that rule. <coughs> First of all, I would add an indicator. So I go and decide. And here I say, okay, you know, I want to run this hypothesis starting with 2007. Uh, this much money I want to put on it. I will, you know, have an indicator which is moving average. And the parameter here is that. I would have two moving averages, 50 day and 200. And whenever there is a crossover, negative or positive, I'll take a trading distance. And then I'll define a signal, which is that signal, uh, it says that I have two parameters, moving average 50 and moving average 200. And then whenever the relationship becomes greater than that, then I want to label that moving average 50 is greater. And then what I would do is, once I have defined that crossover, I'm going to add a rule that says that when that happens, where the crossover happens, I actually want to go in and buy some stock. So I'm going to buy 100 stocks whenever that crossover happens. So that's the rule that I defined. And then, <coughs> then I you know, apply, the next thing to do is basically go and apply that strategy and see how it performs. So let's just run that. And what you're seeing here is that, okay, there are some orders which are placed and things have happened. So let's just see what strategy is here. So here what you can say, see is that this is how the stock moved. The red line is the 50 day, uh, 200 day moving average, and the blue line is the 50 day, which is going to move more rapidly than the slower average. This is where how many stocks I own at any given point in time. And this is what my profit and loss, which is here. So, as in, so here, if you look, uh, there is a crossover. So I've gone ahead and bought some stocks. And when the uh, blue line has crossed the red line, which is the blue line being the fast moving line. And then when the stock dropped and then the trend reversed, I've gone ahead and sold that stock. Unfortunately, the trend reversed very quickly, and then again I have bought the stock. So this is how you will see that, okay, this is how the portfolio is performed. So, you know, and then once the stock starts to oscillate here, then essentially you will see a rapid sell and buy happening there. And okay, this strategy didn't give very good returns for this. But then there is another strategy, which is the Bollinger Bands, which are a different technical indicator. Uh, but I can run it similarly. Here, you have two more faster moving averages. And what you do there is that you say that the stock is going to trend. The hypothesis is that the stock is going to trend between these two bands. And whenever it hits the higher band, I'm going to sell the stock. And whenever it's going to trend at the lower band, I'm going to buy the stock. Because the thing is, since it's going to move, what you can see is that if I buy something here, uh, once it crosses that lower band, and then once it hits the upper band, there is going to be a gap enough that will allow me to make some profit. And this is the strategy. And you can see that, OK, this strategy seems to be paying out more in terms of uh, <coughs> You know, profits, and then what R allows you to do is that you can build the strategy, run it across a large number of stocks. So you could run it across, say, 1,500 or uh, 2,000 stocks, which are there, and then look at how it performs. So calculating volume bands and building average, it has got a good algorithm, or you have written? Correct. No. So algorithms are already there. This is uh, something which is very popular in financial markets. Are. So there are a lot of people have done that. But see, the thing is the standard algorithms we use what are called a standard indicator. Okay? But what most people do is that you would say now, you would run something and you would say that, OK, I have done this. And then you know, with a moving average of 50, this is the return I get. Now people would run additional algorithms on top of this, where they will say that, 
what is the return? They will try to optimize the return. They will say instead of 50, does 60 give me better return or does 70 give me? Or they would try to combine two or three indicators together. So what they would do is they would say, okay, this band is there, this has moved. Now, can I add a moving average to it? Which means that I make a condition that says that if the moving average is this and the band is this, then I want to buy or then I want to sell. And those kind of things people have to write themselves. Apart from financial industry, is popular in any other industry? So this is also popular. I mean, this is a generic this thing. This is just an example which is taken. Uh, if you look at uh, genomics and things also, R is very popular. R is also very popular. If you want to do it, I mean, you can see that it's very quick and very fast in terms of prototyping and things. So if you want to prototype something, you are really quickly, even for log, uh, log analysis or anything, you can very quickly do it. Can it be from, can, can this be from Hadoop? It does have, our Hadoop has an interface. The one thing with R is that uh, it's, uh, there is a, comp uh, so currently this is an interpreted form of R. Right? Uh, so in terms of performance, you are not going to get very fast. But there is also a bytecode compiler which is available, which will give you the performance you want. If you are to really run it at real time uh, with very high speeds, then you will need something that's closer to C. So what people do is that they have also have an uh, extension called as RCPP, where once they have done the prototyping, once they have uh, you know finished it, they will implement four portions of it in C for performance improvement and performance gains. And that is what a lot of people do, that they will run the back test and things on high frequency data, and then uh, <coughs> put the performance part of it in C++. So then, once it's in C++, then okay, you can talk to um, any uh, database or anything which is there. But R, R also has uh, interfaces, native interface drivers for Mongo and other databases. With what? Can it be integrated in thick scripts? Is there a call? Does it, does it need to be run independently? I don't know. If, uh, which, can, I mean, there are two ways you could. Uh, I, I don't know how the big interface is, unfortunately. Uh, but there is nothing that stops you can run R as a, There is something called as a R server where you can uh, push messages to it. It lets you configure it uh, from the analysis as well. Can you uh, call R from uh, Java? Uh, yeah, there is an R Java interface as well. So do you write R code package? You can, I mean, you can call that. There is also, uh, you know, there is, it's, so you can have a socket based interface as well on an R server so you can interface Java. You can. Uh, so R also has something called as an interface to Google visualizations as well, uh, and other visualizations. So uh, you can do, and R also works with GPJS and things as well. What is the uh, data size that you can, what's the maximum data size that you work with? Uh, hard to say. <laughs> what are you trying to? Uh, no, I mean, uh, <coughs> I mean, people use it for uh, high frequency trading, so there is a data size that's sub substantially high. I don't have an exact number to see there. But I, at one point, you are not going to have terabytes of data and have single instance fencing it. Right? So you will have something which is going to you know, break it down into smaller chunks. And then it. I think a related question is uh, what is the uh, performance of the is all the processing in R done in memory, or is, does it have this space uh, optimizations as well so that it can only load part, parts of the data? Uh, are the algorithms built uh, for uh, keeping only part of the data in memory, or are they like all, assume, all assuming that? Everything is all in memory. Is that your question? Um, no, I think you, there are uh, libraries which are available which will deal with the, you know, Kind of schooling which is there and things around there. Thank you.